I thought I heard us go live. <laughs> I was uh, going to get tea. So much for, uh... <laughs> I got it. Welcome, everyone. Nice to see you. And uh, to all of our friends in the hurricane path, I hope you are safe. I've uh, heard from a few of you. We put kind of a word out there just to see how you guys were doing. So hopefully you're okay. And hopefully you have power. And if you don't, you can always watch this later. So yes, my hair is a hot mess today. Today has been cleaning. You can't really tell by behind me, but today, Friday always, well, it's not Friday, it's Thursday. It seems to be my cleaning day. I'm going fishing, so today is my Friday. <laughs> well, hey everyone, so today I have a really fun show for you. If you've never been here before, say hi, I'm a brand ambassador for Brother, and we are taking over the page. Today, it's just me, and we are going to do more with lace. Okay, so if you missed yesterday's episode, yesterday I showed you how to take a pattern, like the one I have behind me, and do inserts for lace. So obviously I didn't do any inserts on this one, but it's the same pattern. So this is with lace and that's without. And so I'm gonna show you how to do that and also use the magnetic hoop. Some of you have asked, will that work for lace? Anything like that? So yes, it will. So hey, if you've never been here before, say hi, say where you're from and I see everybody rolling in, which is awesome. Janice, I'll bet you're not missing Texas right now. <laughs> Just thinking of you moving. Oh, thanks, Trisha. Yeah, hopefully it's good luck fishing. And we have a fun surprise. Actually, our friend Peg, who's a wolf pack, remember she's, her and her husband are flying to uh, where we're gonna be fishing and they're actually joining us tomorrow fishing, which would be kind of fun. That'll be a lucky pre-day, right? So hopefully they don't get caught in those storms today. All right, so if you missed yesterday's episode, you can go back and watch it. It was on my page, Angela Wolf, and on the day before that, Laura was here showing how to do freestanding lace. So those were two big things that built up to this. So this whole week has been all about lace. So if you didn't see it, go back and check it out. And so what I'm going to do is take you over to the machine. And first, I'm going to show you how to hoop for what I do for things like this. It's a little bit different than freestanding lace because usually you use two layers. I'm just going to use one. And you can ask your questions. I can't always see them while I'm uh, doing my demo, but I will be sure to look for them when I get back over here to the screen. So let me just take this down so you can see. Okay. Perfect. All right. I will meet you over at the machine. Do you have your tea, by the way? Thanks, Karina, for the beautiful um, logo. All right, I'll meet you at the machine. Actually, I'll meet you at the free. How's that? All right, so the first thing you need, and I'm just going to grab, I'm going to grab navy. I think you'll see it better than if I do white. So this is just tool fabric. It does not have to be stretchy. I saw somebody yesterday mentioning that they didn't have stretchy. This one has a light stretch, but you wouldn't want to focus on that stretch because it would actually get disfigured. Tool can rip really easy. So the idea is that if you have something that you're going to use this for, try to use it where you're not stretching it. So if it's an insert like I showed you yesterday, or if you're going to use it as an applique. All right, so I have that, and then you need your stabilizer. So I'm gonna, first I'm going to cut this just to be the width that we need. And for somebody asked the other day, this was a great question. I'm trying to go through my notes of what you guys asked so I could try to cover a lot of this. So the first thing I do is I measure how long I want this. So if I'm going to use this for a sleeve, I would want to make sure that I, I cut this longer than the hoop, wider than the hoop. But also if you're going to use it for a sleeve or for an insert, you need to make sure that this one piece of fabric is long enough for that. So I'm going to cut this long enough for one. So what I'll do is I'll just put my arm right here. Yeah, we'll go to about here. So I'm just going to cut that off. And you also need to pay attention to your grain lines. I do this because I'm sewing garments. If you're not sewing garments, it really doesn't matter. But these are my salvages. You only use one layer of tool. Isn't that awesome? You can hardly see through it. 
I mean, hardly, you can hardly tell that it's navy when it's one layer. So let me just put this up, get this out of here. Hold on one second. And I'm going to use one layer of sew and wash. This is my stabilizer, but you can find stuff at your local brother dealer. Now, you have an option. Sometimes I will have one long piece that will be as long as my sleeve. And that way, when I go to rehoop it, I don't have to put more stabilizer in. So why don't I just do it that way? Because that's most of the time the way I do this. All right. I'm just going to get this down just a little bit so I can cut this. So this is sew and wash, okay? Which means it washes away. It's not sticky at all. It washes away. That's the whole key, right? So it feels like fabric. So let me just show you how to hoop this with the magnetic hoop. So the first thing you want to do, lay your stabilizer down. I'm going to kind of save some of this over to the side because once I do my sleeve, I might add things around it. I'm a big conserver of stabilizer because it's not cheap, if you know what I mean. All right, so I have this laid flat. Again, here's my salvage on the side. Let me just shake this a little bit. So I know that I'll be cutting my sleeve this way. Now, next thing you want to do is this is the magnetic hoop. If you haven't seen this, this thing is pretty awesome. I guess first I need to take these off, right? I left two of them on just so you can see these. Hold on. This is how you take them off. Lift up and off. And remember, don't put your pins around this because you'll end up with a whole collection underneath this magnetic hoop. Okay. So first, just slide your fabric over gently. Boom. Keep your fingers out of the way, by the way. Make sure it's nice and flat. If it's not, these are the first two that you really need to make sure that your fabric and your stabilizer is nice and flat. That looks great. This is so much easier than putting this in a huge hoop, but I still use my huge hoop because I can do so much more in just one little, one embroidery hoop. All right, slide this down to the end. That's not quite flat, so I, you know what I'm going to do for this one, just to make sure these are staying nice and flat all the way down to the ends. Slide that down, and now hold this, hold your fabric, and slide that down. That looks great. Now let's do this side, because it's really important that when you're doing lace that your fabric and stabilizer is really flat. And I see that I have a little, just a little bump there, so I'm going to hold this flat. There, much better. See how easy it is just to move these around? So you just keep adjusting it until you have exactly your fabric and stabilizer the way you want it. All right, now. Look at how nice and tight that is compared to this end. This one doesn't have one on yet, but see how that's going to embroider beautifully. And then once you get finished, Double check if you need to adjust any of them. I'm going to move this one over just a little bit. That really looks good. It's nice and tight. Remember, if you're going to pull the fabric at all, tool is very, very gingerly, meaning it will rip. Pretty easy, right? Okay, now let's go to the machine and pick out a design that would be good for lace. So on the screen here, click on embroidery. I'm going to use a built-in design. There are so many cool designs here in this luminaire. This is the XP2. So click on this here. And you can scroll through designs this way. Make sure you guys can see OK. Is that close enough? You can scroll through this way and choose a design. Scroll up and down. 
some of these are better than others as far as for lace. So something like this is way too dense for something that's going to be on that itsy bitsy tool fabric. Now I've done this one on lace before and you would think that it looks like it might be too dense. It's not, it works great. And that one was beautiful, 33 minutes. So I won't do that one with you today, but if you go back to the brother blog from last New Year's, we did that New Year's project collaboration with all of the brand ambassadors. I used this design and I changed the colors just to give you a quick preview. See how many colors are here? I went under the color shuffle and I picked, I think I picked this, yes. And I took a lot of this away. I added silver, white. I think I punched in this one to use as metallic thread and I used navy. I think I also used a lighter shade of blue. I can't remember, but off the top of my head, it was something like that. Maybe, maybe that was even lighter. And I clicked okay. And look at all of these options that popped up. Keep clicking refresh. This is actually very similar to the one that I chose. I'm gonna punch, I'm just gonna bring up a couple of these just to give you an idea. Now there's a couple other colors in there because there were so many colors on this design. So I would just go back and add a bunch of silver if I just wanted it to be all gray. That one's kind of cool. And this actually worked out well on that tool. And that's a pretty dense design, but it really looked nice. So when I talk about density, I'm talking about how, how much thread is in one area in your design. If it's too much, it will rip your fabric, at least if you're using tool. Okay, so let's just say these are my three favorites and that's gorgeous. I'm gonna go back though, cause I wanna give you some other ideas. Under embroidery, click here again. These designs here, you might've seen me use, I've used all of these in different things. This one looks amazing. And also, if you're trying to do something with a sleeve, remember that you can turn these different angles. So that would be kind of a weird thing on a sleeve, but if it went up and down a little bit, check this out. And this doesn't mean you have to do it for a sleeve. Maybe you're doing this for a table or something, but I'm obviously focusing on garments. So click on edit, rotate, and you can rotate this just a little bit, a little bit at a time. So use your imagination. Okay, so if that was the top of the sleeve, oops. We'll put that down there. And then let's duplicate that design. Switch it this way. Now look what we have. Once you start piecing these together a little bit, you can find a way that you could maybe use two designs together. Now that would make a very cool part of a sleeve. Maybe just even turn this one a little bit more and turn this one a little bit more. I love this that you can turn it like 0.1 of a degree. <laughs> So anyways, you could have fun with that. This would make a great sleeve. Let's see how long that one takes. 37 minutes. We don't have all day. So I'm gonna take you to one more. <laughs> and you can go back to the brother blog if you wanna see some of these. There's a few more things in here I wanted to show you. Some of these would be really cool on fabric. These are a lot of quilting designs, but consider using that on tool as well. That's a little dense, but you can adjust the density now with these. So when you make it larger, you can actually have the density stay the same or less, which would be fine on tool. And I'll give you a few more examples here.
That would be really cool on the sleeve. It's dense, but it's spread out enough that you'd be okay. Again, you could duplicate these and then make them long. This would do a this would make a great insert too. It'd be six inches wide, so that'd be a pretty big insert. All right, so I'm just gonna pick something because I've you might have seen this on my sleeves before. Very simple. Okay, you know what you could do with these? This could be part of a sleeve, but it could also be an insert. So I could have two here and then slide my hoop and do two more. Do you see what I mean? And this is only five inches wide. So for that sample that I showed you yesterday, those were three inches wide. This one is, um, well, 4.68 inches to be exact. And I could use that for a whole insert going down the Delilah. That would be very cool. Okay, so I'm gonna click embroidery. And I think I have, let's see, we're just using one color. You can see in the layout, you have other options. You could put a basting stitch around it, things like that. But for now, I think we're fine. And I just need to move to change my foot because I've been actually sewing some projects on here. So there you go. Make sure my arm isn't in your way. All right, hold on one second. I gotta get my arm in there. I've got my screwdriver. <laughs> I always remember righty tidy, lefty loosey, right? Except I guess I have to know my right from left if I'm going to do that, right? <laughs> that was funny. Okay, so I have my needle threader ready to go. Just touch a button, it'll thread my needle. I threw in some embroidery thread in there. And I'm using the same color on the bobbin. Now I'm kind of cheating with you guys here, because I'm using a color that's a little darker than the green, but I already have the bobbin wound, so that's what we're gonna use. Okay, so I'm gonna just bring you back here just a little bit. So I have room to get my hoop in here. And I can't, I, hopefully this design will fit in here. I didn't even check that, so let me just make sure that that would not be good. Slide down your hoop. The good news is if it doesn't fit, the machine will tell you change to a bigger hoop. Hey, we're in the clear. It's always the bonus. I could have set it to the size of the hoop too, but I was too excited to pick out a design, right? So on here, let's just say that we already had a design that we're trying to match. And if you haven't seen this feature, I had somebody the other day tell me, ask me what was my favorite feature on this machine. So I'm gonna have to say it's the projector. Which when I click that, you can see, can you see those flowers? Now, if you see a rainbow, don't forget that does not come with the machine, it's just the camera that does that. So what I'm, what it's showing me right there, let me take you back over to the screen for a second is what's in this area here. And I can move this. Watch, if I move this, what happened? My whole hoop moved. So I'll do it again while you're not watching. When I move that square, it takes me to a different part of the flower. So if you were trying to match this up in an exact area, or say that you do a whole bunch of these flowers and then you wanna add little ones into it, you can use this projector to get that right in the exact spot that you want it. It's very cool. And you can also change the background. So if this is a dark background, which it is, now you can really see, right? The whole flower, gray or light. I'm gonna click okay. And I'm ready to embroider. And I have the app on my phone that I can set up that if I want to know if it runs out of thread, but I'm just going to click embroider. And as long as it gets started correctly, and I know I have my monster scissors, it's all I have right here right now, but I'm just going to cut that off. All right, so we're going to let that embroider and I'm going to come back and see you at the screen.
So, what do you think? Pretty easy? No rainbow included? <laughs> Jane, I, would, I agree. I, it would make my day, too. <laughs> it's so funny. We try to get that off there when we're doing video, but it never works. And yes, I call it my <laughs> non-tattoo tattoos. So do you have any questions? What do you do with all the samples you make and show us on this show? So Mary, a lot of them are in my closet. Some of them, if it's a small sample and I'm not gonna use it again, it goes in the trash. But any of the expensive fabric or um, any of the patterns that you see that like this, this one I'm gonna use for a sleeve. I'm gonna insert into a Delilah for a short sleeve, something like this. Um, if it was four and a half inches wide, I think that would be really cute. It would also be cute in a regular sleeve, like a rouge tee or something like that, where um, you could take that sleeve and have an insert. And then all of this would be fabric, and then just this part would be embroidery. So yes, they usually end up in my closet, or my sisters get little gifts boxes occasionally. Julie always says if I'm making something in her size, I'll get a text message. I'll be waiting for it. <laughs> Uh, Amanda, would it, yep, it would definitely look like a tattoo. So Amanda, have you seen um, some some of my jackets that I've shown in the past? I have some of them on my blog if you go to angelawolf.com. So I will actually put a whole tool sleeve, use tool for a sleeve on a jacket, and it looks like you have beautiful tattoos. And if you find something, a uh, design that has a lot of color in it, like those roses, it looks amazing. In fact, some of you have probably heard the story before <laughs> that one time I went to an event and I had one of those shirts on and it was a beautiful green and blue uh, embroidery going down my sleeve and it looked, you would have sworn it was a tattoo, but I can't handle paint, so I doubt I'll have a tattoo anytime soon. And anyways, photos appeared on Facebook and my husband's not on Facebook and he got a bunch of phone calls, people thinking that I got this massive tattoo going all the way down my arm. So that was, that was a pretty funny one. All right, what weight bobbin thread? So, uh, Mary, I'm in this, for this lace, I'm using the exact same bobbin, or exact same thread that I'm using in the top as the bobbin. So whatever embroidery thread I'm using, I'm using the same. And I am using embroidery thread, not, um, not regular thread. Let's see how it's looking. Let's just take a quick look. Oh yeah, that's looking good. course we're live so that's usually when I would break a needle when we go back to see that <laughs> it's it's the absolute definitely um, with the embroidery show if you use navy as a thread actually it would and what I'll do next week Amanda if you if you follow our shows I'll wear my navy top next week I'm looking around I pretty much cleaned up so everything's back in the closets here at the office uh, but I have a navy top that I embroidered all navy onto that tool, it looks gorgeous. Well, I thought it looked gorgeous. But yeah, you can use, uh, a lot of times you'll see me, I'll use black. I keep looking to see if any of the samples are around that I can point at. I spy in the studio, but I don't see them in here. I use black tool with black embroidery. Beautiful, it turned out beautiful. And you don't have to use, I mean, this is for lace, but you don't have to use tool. Let's just say you wanna use one of these light designs and put it on silk chiffon. That looks like a great top. I actually brought, now I did bring that in today. Hold on, I'll go get it. You guys keep watching this for a second. We'll see if don't break a needle and I'll go grab that top. Here you go. Here's one. This is the one that we're gonna do a sew along sometime this fall. I decided to wait till after my pants class. But this one is embroidery. This was built in to the machine, the designs, two designs. Actually, no, these were my designs. And then this was two, but this is silk chiffon. So see how on the edge, I did this beautiful embroidery and it's silk chiffon, so it frays a little bit, but it won't fray. It looks like a fashion fray. Is there such thing as a fashion fray? So this is on silk chiffon. So still lightweight, but not as see-through as the tool. So keep that in mind too. And actually, I, did, I hooped the silk chiffon the exact same way that I just showed you here. Although when I did that top, that magnetic hoop was not out, so. Oh, 
Oh, yes, Cindy, it'll be available afterwards. I'll try to put this one on my blog, too, uh, to go with the ones from this whole week so you'll have a continuation of um, all these lace ones that are really cool. Lori, so how you continue the design and keep rehooping is as soon as this is finished, I'll remove all those magnetic sides, slide my fabric up, and uh, rehoop it. So if this finishes before our show's over, I'll show you how to do that. If not, uh, that's how you do it. <laughs> oh, Deborah, that's so funny. All right. I'm just checking to make sure I'm not missing any questions. Nope, I don't think so. Oh, wait. Well, what? Uh, here's one. So, Teresa, this is the magnetic hoop that came out this year with the new launch with Brother, and it works on the XP, the Luminaire. It's a little too heavy for you to use it on the Dream Machine and those other machines, though, just to be clear. Oh, Janice, that's a great idea. I've taped them together with medical tape, but to sew those pieces together, brilliant. Because I have, I have like really long pieces of that stabilizer and it washes away anyways. So what a brilliant idea. Marion, great to see you, by the way. Marion, I got to see you in person last weekend at Linda Z's event. Uh, and your top was turning out fabulous. The time went by too fast. We should have had three more days, right? Does the tool come in different types of fabric, like rayon, polyester, or silk? If so, what type is best for doing this? So, Marianne, there are, are a gazillion kinds of tool. So, go if you know if your local uh, fabric store is open. You can message me too, uh, and I can tell you where I went. But you have a couple good stores by you. I think I know what town you're in. Um, and so when you go through the section, this is what you want to check for when you're looking for a tool. You want to make sure it's soft to the skin because there are a lot that are not so soft. And those are the ones that we use mostly for, um, I don't know, party, party bags, the stuff that's really stiff. You want to make sure it has a really fine weave. And you also want to make sure that um, it is soft. If it stretches a little bit, that's fine, but just make sure it's soft. Also, squeeze it and make sure it doesn't wrinkle a lot because otherwise you'll be a wrinkled mess. Oh, hey, we're ready for design two. You guys ready? So design one is finished. If you look closely, it's way back there. And now I should have just hit it where it kept embroidering, but I didn't. So now we're going to finish the other flower. This is going to look really cool. And as it embroiders, it might pull your tool or your stabilizer just a little bit, but as long as it's not wrinkling in your design, you're fine because it's going to wash away. So, Marianne, hopefully that helped with the tool, the tool piece. Just scroll down here, make sure. Oh, Anne, I'll work on that. <laughs> It's a new thing for them, so you know you never know what might come out. I do know that it, they have one for the 10 needle as well. Now, for the Luminaire, I have to take that off the machine to rehoop. For the 10 needle, you don't have to take it off. Just kind of a bonus. All right, let's just see here. I agree, Stephanie. I'm just making sure I'm not missing any questions. I'm scrolling through all of these. So if I missed any of your questions, ask it now because I'm getting close to the end. Yep, Marianne, you got the right spot. Perfect spot. <laughs> and uh, no, Jeannie, you cannot use this on the Stellaire or the Dream Machine. Neither one. It's only for the Luminaire. You missed the show with... Oh, so if you missed this week's show... Tuesday was with Laura, and you just scroll down on the Brother Facebook page, and you'll find it there. You, you can also go to their past events. I always post the video in the events, and the show from yesterday is on my page. Yesterday, I focused on pattern alterations to fit this lace in it. Christine, you talked a little bit about density. How do you know when uh, to change it? So, I can't show you right now on here, but... When you're making a design bigger, 
if it doesn't change the density on that, you might have stitches that are way spread out. Or if you're making it smaller, you might have so many stitches that the needle breaks and the thread breaks. So if you can adjust the density as you make it bigger, then the design will keep intact of exactly what it looks like, what you expected it to look like when you made it bigger or smaller. We could have a whole day on density. If we do that, we should bring Joanne and Cindy on here too, because they have a lot of um, tips for embroidery. Oh, Celeste, organza would be beautiful as a base on here. Definitely. Karen, this is the Luminaire XP2 that I'm using here. So the magnetic hoop, there's a separate, a different magnetic hoop for the 10 needle. Yep. Oh, thanks, Susan. <laughs> All right, I think I got all of your questions. So the, it's just about finished embroidering. Oh, Marsha, how do you know if a, if a design in your machine is freestanding lace? Well, first of all, I'm not doing freestanding lace on here because I have the tool. If I was doing just stabilizer, you would need to make sure your design is connected some way where it's not gonna fall apart. I mean, that's the whole thing about freestanding lace. When you add tool though, it's going to stay together. It's almost like having an invisible weave. I actually prefer that over a lot of the cutouts. Now I could still cut away portions of this like Laura did on hers. So you just have to test it. And it really depends what application you're using it for. And I see a lot of you rolling in asking the same questions I've already answered. So make sure you go back and watch the rerun. So this magnetic hoop only works on the Luminaire XP2 and XP1. With the upgrade, you need the upgrade for the XP1. Uh, Care, you want to know where my blog is? So there's a couple blogs that you might like. One is uh, blog.brothersews.com. That's one where you a lot of the tutorials you're seeing for a lot of the brother machines are. They have great tutorials and a lot of free things there. Um, and then free design, stuff like that. And then my blog is, let's see if I can find it on here, Fashion Sewing with Angela Wolf, or you can go to AngelaWolf.com. Either one. They're all, they all connect to the same place. And I also try to put quite a few things in the uh, in the pattern group. Claudette, what foot am I using? Uh, I think it's a free motion foot. I have to double check. It's an embroidery foot, I know that. <laughs> I have to look up which one it is. Uh, Sharon, can any design be used on tool? No, go back and watch at the beginning and I went through all of that. Oh, Marsha, you're gonna love your hoop and your upgrade. Marty, can you use adhesive stabilizer on tool? So there's adhesive wash away, which you've seen me use. I use that on mesh fabric. I don't use it on tool. There's just too much of, I'm using my hand as an open weave. There's too much open weave on that fabric on tool to put it on the sticky. You just end up with kind of a sticky hot mess. I mean, it works, but I would not recommend it. Now, with mesh or not, I didn't really like it on the silk chiffon. It was too fine. But on mesh, it was good because mesh is a little thicker. So when you stretch that, like here's a piece of mesh. This is for a neckline for my next outfit, but this will give you an idea. So this is mesh. See how it's a little bit thicker? And this mesh has a lot of stretch. So I can lay this on a sticky back, wash away, embroider, and then when it washes away, number one, if this is going to be a fitted top, I can stretch this as much as I need to in order that the embroidery will look nice on your body. But also, even if you're not stretching it, see how dense this is as far as the weave compared to tool. Tool you can see right through. So this you can use sticky back. So this is mesh. Great question. And Beth, I'm using a sew and wash. You can find it at your local brother dealer. I also have some on my website and I gave a coupon code yesterday to everyone, phishing. Capital letters, fishing, F-I-S-H-I-N-G, because maybe it would be good luck, right? All right. And I did like the design that Laura picked yesterday, Marsha. All right, I think I have all, I think it's just about finished. And then I'll show you how to rehoop it. And we still have a little bit more time. So that sounds good. <laughs> 
Amanda, do you prefer polyester or rayon thread for embroidery? You know, I like both. I do a lot of garments though. So quite often if I'm embroidering on jeans, I actually use universal polyester thread that's not embroidery thread. So I experiment with a lot of them. I don't have a particular favorite favorite. I do like the Brother brand. I know I'm a brand ambassador, but I actually like the Brother brand of embroidery thread. I've got a whole rack of it somewhere. You can see it now, you can see that one behind me. <laughs> I spy in the far back corner. The colors are great and I have no problems with it breaking, things like that. All right, so I think we are finished. I'll meet you over there. Let me take that message down real quick. Okay, so I, you got to love it when the machine talks to you, right? So I'm going to take this out. This looks wonderful. So just lift up on the side. Carefully slide out your design. I probably should have taken that around the side. That was kind of a bonehead move, but I'll show you when I put it back on. This is where, by the way, it should have gone through the corner, not over this, just for the record. That's what I get for trying to watch the camera and do it at the same time. So now I'm going to take you over and show you how I can adjust this design to remove. Okay, so now I'm going to rehoop, and yes, this is a built-in design. This is actually one of my favorites. Now, I could, so Marsha, to answer your question, this design here, see how this has such a nice outline? You could also add an applique outline to it, so bring it closer just so you can see. It's very faint. Now, do you see it better? All right, so this is how I'm going to slide this up. So what I was saying there is you could add an applique around a design by a touch of a button, which I can show you how to do an applique. That will make it nice and secure on the outside and you can use it a little bit more like freestanding lace too. You know, you really just have to experiment with some designs, but I have used the applique feature many, many, many times. So I'm going to leave this in place right now just while I take these, these off down at the bottom. These are the heavy ones, the heavy magnets. Not literally heavy, but... All right, so now I can slide this, and I'm going to be very careful. I'm going to try to do this with you on camera, but... I need a different angle. Can you still see it? I'm just going to gingerly slide this up. And if you're worried about the fabric, I can't quite get this on the angle with you guys. Hold on. I'm going to take this off just a little bit. You could, with heavier fabric, slide this up. I just want to make sure I don't mess up my tool. So you can see I'm sliding on the one side, not the other at this point. And we're going to lay this flat. So this I slid right up to the top mark right here. I left the other side off right now because I just it was too hard at the angle with the camera. But what I usually do is put my body right in front of here and slide up facing me like this way. Okay, so now This is a pretty long design. So for me, I'm gonna to want to move this all the way down. So I'm just gonna go ahead for this particular thing. I'm gonna remove this and rehoop. If you have a table, like a cutting table that has a grid, like a grid mat, I would use that because I would line up the grid where I had one center line all the way down here. But I can see it just fine on here. I don't know if you can see it as it goes, but here's the design. I'm sliding it down. And I'm gonna leave part of the flower in here, right? Because we're gonna add the flowers. And if I bring this back to show you, this took up almost the whole hoop, but not totally. So if I leave just a little bit of the flower on here, right in the center, then I know that I can add two more flowers for the bottom of my sleeve. All right, so I'm gonna start by just snapping the side in place. All right, 
That looks really nice. So by the way, I have a question for you guys. Do you have any other suggestions? I mean, I just, I love lace on everything, but in a garment or even in home deck, where would be a good place to add this? Because once you're finished, you could either have an entire piece of fabric that looks like lace, which thinking ahead to the holidays, I can think of a lot of applications now that I'm going to be home so much because we're all home. I'm going to have a lot of fun making things for the holidays this year. I'm doing now usually you do the sides and the bottom, but what I'm doing is I'm holding this fabric tight myself as I'm doing this. So depending on your fabric, you might find a way that is better. Maybe you need to do the fronts and the back. But as I'm doing this, I'm sliding all this fabric down to the end to make sure it's nice and tight. Boom. Oh, that looks fantastic. All right, so I'm going to bring you back to the machine. And I can't wait to read your ideas of, oh, curtains. Curtains would be a fantastic idea, Marianne. Actually, that's a great idea. I just told my husband I wanted to redo the curtains in our bedroom. Okay, now this is how you should slide this on, through here, not over here. Okay, so I did that not paying attention. I just want to clear the record on that before somebody breaks their needle. Okay, so slide the hoop back on. Everything's nice and flat. It looks great. Now let's go back to the machine. And it says we're finished embroidering. Yes, but we're going to do it again. So this time I'm going to hit the projector again. It says, wait a minute. I can see my box, which you can see here. If you look closely, right? But I don't care about that. I want to match it up with the top with my other flower. So I could do it two ways. I could scan in my fabric where I could see the flowers. But today we're going to focus on this projector. So if I bring this up to the top, you put the box around whatever area you want to show up on the screen. So there's that. And look what happens. My design is crossing over. So I need to move my whole design down. And I'll just show you what buttons I'm hitting here. See how it's moving the whole design down? It, I also noticed that it's over to the left a little bit. So I need to make sure that it's centered with what I want. Okay, so I'm showing that part. And this is what I see on here. See that? So it's still pretty close. This looks pretty even as far as this section to here but I'm still gonna move it down a little bit more as far as I can. I don't know how much further I can in this hoop, but we're gonna try. And I'm moving my box, which you can't see that, but you can see on the screen. There's my, that's looking pretty good. I like that. And I'm thinking I'm just gonna move it over to the right just a little bit more. So you can see my design moving over. That lines up a little bit better and that lines up a little bit better. Now, if I try to move it outside of the area where this hoop will go, it will actually tell me that it won't fit or when I go to hit embroider, it's gonna say change to a bigger hoop. So let's hope that's not the case. Although it might be because I didn't punch in my design. Also, one more thing on here. If I click this button here, it will embroider both of those colors at the same time. It won't stop. All right. Hey, we're ready to go. Now, it I know it looks gray, but we're not using gray. So it looks like it's going to fit in here just fine. I'm going to click embroider. And I'm just going to click stop for now. Because I think you got the idea, right? 
So that's how easy it is to move that around. Oh, and that would be a good one too. You guys are giving me a lot of ideas. I've been big into the napkins lately. Joan, that's a great idea too, putting a neckline on top of a neckline. That would be a good refashion project, by the way. I see a lot of curtains in here. Very right. Uh, Christine, is there a particular order you move remove the magnets? Well, first of all, if you were using a thicker fabric, this was different because it was tulle, but if you're using a thicker fabric, you would leave two of those little side ones, like so you have the two big ones in the middle, two side ones, and then these two down here. So I would remove all of the big ones. I would save two of the little ones at one end, the end that I'm going to slide that up because it will stay along that magnet so I can take my fabric and just pull it exactly like that. You can't do that with tool because you'll rip the fabric. But yes, yeah, so that's, and so when you put the magnets back on, usually you do the bigger ones first on each side. It will hold your fabric. And then depending on what you're using, you can start with the two at the end. It really depends on your fabric though. I've used it a few different ways. Oh, Marty, that's a good idea. Tie a matching ribbon on it. That would be a great idea. Table runner, Carolyn, that's a good one. You guys have a lot of great ideas. I'm gonna, that's what I was thinking, Patricia. I It's been on my bucket list for three years. And we leave our tree up to like March because <laughs> I'm usually traveling. But the way we're going this year, uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, that'd be pretty too. All right, so any other questions? Yes, Janice, there is a grid overlay for these hoops. I usually use the grid on my cutting table because I can see through it. It's just a habit of mine. So that works well, too. No, Sandra, you cannot use the magnetic. This, this particular magnetic hoop you cannot use on the Quattro. It's too heavy, and the motor isn't strong enough. All right, so I think I got it all. Did I miss anybody's questions? Good idea, Phyllis. A dinner tablecloth. Wynn's going to think he he's going to think, well, his birthday's coming up and our anniversary's in October. It gives me a whole month to make this stuff, right? All right, so those of you that rolled in here uh, late, don't forget you can share this to your page if you want to watch this over again. I will try to put it on my blog, but it won't be till this weekend. But come to the Brother Sews page. Come back and watch it at, or share it to your page, and then it'll show up on your page. You can't lose it. All great ideas. I agree. <laughs> so anything else, you guys? Otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful week. You probably want to know the schedule for next week, right? Hold on. Let me bring it up. So first of all, Brother has, if you go to Brother So's Facebook page, they actually have on there um, events where they have all the events that you can sign up for. So let me just open the Google Calendar and let you know who's coming on so you're not wondering. It's a fun week. We've got a couple of really fun weeks. Well, they're always fun, right? But let me just check for you. I think Joanne's coming on next week. Or is it the week after? No, it's next week. Okay, so September 1st. Oh my gosh, it's September. Are you kidding me? This is like, where did this month go? <laughs> All right, I'm going to just put this on here. For those that want to find the blog, I'll put it on there for you. And don't forget to go to uh, Brother's blog as well, which is blog.brothersos.com. That's where you can find a ton of free stuff and that New Year's Eve project I was mentioning earlier. So September 1st is Tuesday. Emily's going to be on at 4. So Emily and I have a little thing we're going to do next week. So on Tuesday, she's going to make a simple zippered bag. So maybe it could be for school or whatever. She, I think she's going to use cork too, which would be very fun. I'm going to follow through with that. So on Tuesday, right, we're going to end at 4.30. And Cindy Hogan is live at 4.30 going over software for those that like to watch that live. And that will be on Cindy's page. Then on Wednesday, on my page, I have at 1.30 p.m., I'm going to take the bag that Emily shows us how to make, and I'm going to show you how to make it what we call quilt broidery. I'm going to embellish the fabric that looks like quilting but using embroidery. Very fun. So that's what I'm going to do on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, Joanne's going to be on at noon, and she has an entire... A demo set up for a bobbin work, which you've probably seen her bobbin work on It's So Easy before. It's amazing. And before I forget, though, 
This Saturday is another episode of It's So Easy. I think we're following along with season 16 right now, if I remember correctly. That's at noon on Saturday. So a lot of fun things this week. Uh, if you have questions, you can always message me. But in the meantime, have a wonderful, have a wonderful day, have a wonderful weekend. And thanks again for watching. And brother, thanks for letting us take over your page. See you guys.